Good morning, everyone. This is Michael Sowers, your guest guest host for this week's edition of Encompass Live, our weekly online show that we've been doing for the better part of, uh, I think we're in our fifth year now here from the Nebraska Library Commission, Commission in the currently cool but sunny downtown Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, Encompass Live is a weekly online show that we do covering topics of all sorts of interest to uh, uh, librarians of all types. Uh, sometimes we have uh, guest speakers come in. We have commissioned staff do things. Uh, I do a, a monthly uh, Tech Talk episode where we bring in guest uh, speakers and sometimes I do a presentation. And um, all of these events are recorded for posterity. So if you haven't been able to join us live, you can go through our complete archive or rewatch your favorite episodes. Um, this week's uh, session, I, I will introduce our guest speaker in just a moment there. You can see her uh, uh, name and title there on the screen. I uh, just want to let everybody know if you have questions during the session, uh, our speaker has told me, Amanda, that uh, there will be several points at which she will happily take questions and has left plenty of time for them at the end. So there is a question and answers interface in your GoToWebinar uh, software. Just go ahead and type your question in there and I will pay attention to those and pass those along to Amanda. Also, if you have a microphone, everybody is muted by default. However, if you have a mic, feel free to type into the questions area, hey, I have a mic, unmute me, or something to that effect. And we will happily uh, turn your mic on for you and let you let us hear your dulcet tones, ask your uh, question instead of just me repeating what you've typed. So. With that, I would like to introduce Amanda Roberson, the Youth Coordinator for Children and Teen Services at the Hartford County Library in Maryland, and she's here to talk about the STEM programs that she is doing at the library, and actually, if you don't know what STEM is, I'm sure she's going to fill us in on that. So, uh, good morning, Amanda, and what you got going on? Good morning, everyone. Um, okay, well, this morning we're going to talk about STEM programs and STEM kits that Hartford County has um, put into place for our youngest learners all the way through to eighth graders. So I'll talk a little bit about <clears throat> LEAP, Science is Fun, Little Leapers, and Little Leapers 3.5. We have a lot of leaping happening in Hartford County. Um, as I go through the slides, if you have any questions, um, you can feel free to ask them at the time, but as I talk about each of the programs, I'm going to pause afterward to take any questions um, that might be specific to your needs. Um, and I've built plenty of time in for that. Um, so as you have questions, you can ask them, but I'm going to kind of wait to answer them um, until the end of each segment. And then at the end, I'll take general questions as well. All right, so we have um, three different types of STEM kits or STEM programs within Hartford County. Um, LEAP Science is Fun was launched in 2007, and it has a target age group of third to eighth grade children. Little Leapers is an extension of the LEAP program, um, but we wanted to gear that same STEM learning, which is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, for those of you who are not familiar with STEM yet. Um, and you can also throw STEAM in there uh, now and add arts into the mix. Um, but we wanted to expand the same um, science learning that was happening with the LEAP programs and extend it to um, our younger learners. So these kits are geared for children ages um, birth to five. And you can see a little one there in the picture actually checked out our I'm an entomologist kit. And, and went to the zoo and was uh, looking at, at bugs in, in one of the exhibits there. And then we also have um, our newest addition to our STEM um, kits and programming, which is Little Leapers 3.5, which is a unique program that engages young children in digital literacy through the use of iPad minis, um, apps that are geared towards um, stream topics, and stream is when you add in um, pretty much everything that education is. So you can see that STEM just keeps on growing from STEM to STEAM to stream. Um, and through their engagement with these apps, they're, being, um, they're becoming familiar with um, digital technology that they'll need to use and be um, productive with as they enter school and as um, 
they go throughout their, their lives. So LEAP Science is Fun. Um, they are, <clears throat> the LEAP kits are boxed sets, um, and they are all themed. Um, within each box, there is um, different materials to help um, children explore si the science topics. Um, they include books, DVDs, posters, um, some of them have microscopes in them, there's all kinds of different things that everything that they need in order to conduct the experiments, even um, consumable products are within these kits. So they can be checked out and um, the parents and children can explore everything from astronomy through zoology. Um, and I'll take you to um, a list, a, a listing of all of those so um, I can talk about that just a little. Let me switch my screen over here. <clears throat> okay, th this is our website. So you can see that there is a um, listing of the LEAP kits on our website. Um, they're, <clears throat> again, all the way um, from A to Z, you can check out some things you work with snap circuits, um, <clears throat> even birds and fossils. Um, we even have some that um, encourage kids to explore aquatic life. And some of those kits do come back a little wet. Um, and we'll talk about, I'll talk about how that's kind of dealt with. Um, but there's lots of different um, kits available. And as you click on each of the links, it'll show you the different materials that are in each kit. Along with each kit, you'll see that there's a student guide and a teacher guide. The student guide um, and teacher guide just gives recommended activities for the kit. Um, and I'll click on a couple different ones at least so you can see um, the difference. Um, so there can be things that are as simple as um, binoculars and how to um, engage with um, the binoculars within um, a science setting. And it'll give suggestions for use as well as books that coincide with the theme. Um, so lots of different, um, and so this is one of our really neat ones that actually has a human body in it, like a, mo a model of a human body. Um, so you can um, actually explore um, the different parts of the body, and there are materials to go along with that. Each LEAP kit has a science, um, has several different science experiments to go along with these activities. If you go back to um, our website, you can see that these can be reserved online, um, which is um, great for them to be transported from branch to branch so that people can get the actual topic that they are looking for at the time they are looking for it. Switch back over here. Okay, so the, one of the first questions I typically get about these kits is how much do they cost? And um, it is a pricey um, collection. Um, kits can range in price from anywhere under $100 to a little over $400. Um, they come with um, materials that are intended for um, school use. So we buy from a lot of school supply um, distributors. Um, and we look for very durable items because we do know that they are going to be um, checked out by a lot of people and have multiple uses and possibly multiple um, groups of children, it, even in one checkout. So we don't typically purchase from the toy market, um, which expects, you know, probably just one family will use it. We purchase from more, um, from vendors that are more geared towards school supplies and um, reused durable items. Um, because the kits are um, pricey, um, we have two different ways that this collection has been funded. One is through an LSTA grant. Um, this grant was what helped to launch this um, 
this collection in 2008 and has and then we also have our library foundation which allows people to sponsor um, kits um, and that has happened for um, a couple different kits where different um, groups in the community have made decisions to um, sponsor a kit that may connect with, with their mission or their goal. And you can see over here on the website that right here on the LEAP page, you can click on Sponsor a LEAP Kit. And then there will be um, information on how you can contact our foundation director to talk about how you want to sponsor that kit and how many kits you'd like to sponsor and where your logo will be placed on the kit. You can see in the picture here that these are some of the kits. They're all different shapes and sizes. We typically try to go with these um, more durable cases now. We found that they are best for circulation. Um, they are sealed after everything is checked in um, with the with circulation and all the pieces are in them, they are zip side shut so that the pieces do not come out in the branch. Um, so that they only come out as uh, families are using them at home or uh, teachers are using them in the classroom. So a few more questions that I typically get. Um, what happens if something goes missing? Um, to be honest with you, a lot of things really don't go missing. Um, sometimes you might miss some um, small parts that can easily be replaced, and we do have a LEAP hospital um, that uh, if something is missing, they can go there to be replaced. If it's um, something that really doesn't need to be replaced because there's lots of these little pegs within it, and there's just a few that are missing, but it doesn't change the functioning of the kit, then we may choose not to replace those and not to charge for them. But if it's larger pieces, uh, the, the circulation staff that checks them on calls the last bar and sees if possibly these items can be recovered or if they can be located. And then um, if not, we, we will ask um, that borrower to pay a replacement cost and a processing fee for whatever the item is. Some other circulation details is that LEAP kits can be checked out for a week at a time. They do have a $2 per day overdue fee, and that is um, consistent with our overdue fees for other special items within our collection. And again, in this picture, you can see um, a display in a library where all of the, uh, the LEAP kits are stored and um, available for a checkout. Along with LEAP kits, we made the decision to, um, within the grant, provide programming uh, to go along with this STEM education and this excitement around science learning. So there are three different types of programs that were originally um, put into place. One is school year programs, and they revolve around eight different themes, electricity, chemistry, earth science, medicine, invention, zoology, archaeology, and codes. And you can see uh, some children here in this picture engaging in one of those, uh, those programs. We also incorporated summer programming that it was more non-traditional science programs, so we brought in different presenters that would, that would present on science topics, and sometimes they even um, incorporated kind of really fun juggling, illusion, and different things like that in order to uh, demonstrate science for, for the children. And then there is um, a fair that we had in 2009 called The Future is Mine, and it is it was a science and technology career day. So there were different pre uh, exhibitors and presenters that provided an overview of careers within science and technology and uh, were able to, to chat with the kids about um, their particular 
Oh, field. We continue that programming throughout the, the year now. Um, oh, let me go back here. We continue that programming throughout the year now, and there are STEM programs offered um, throughout the summer, throughout the school year, um, as branches uh, see fit to, to put it in. So with that, that is kind of an introduction to our LEAP kit. So I'm going to come back here to our, to our website and um, give you guys an opportunity to let me know what more do you want to know about LEAP kits and how they function within the Harvard County Library System. Okay, everyone, for those of us who have joined us, I, you, uh, and I was just going to remind everybody that you can type your questions in the Q&A, or if you have a microphone, let us know, and I'll turn it on for you. Uh, but we, we already have a question uh, coming through from Chris. Uh, do you see much teen use of the LEAP kits, or mainly kits? Um, we don't really know exactly who's checking out the, the, the LEAP kits as far as within ages, because it's just their library cards. We, all of the kits kind of have a different feel to them for what age groups they might um, attract. So a lot of the more complicated kits um, are going to attract our middle school teens, um, but I don't have any data on whether teens are actually checking them out to use them. Um, and I had a question that came up that kind of ties into that. Do, do you have any ideas on the uh, ratio or amount of homeschooler use versus general, I guess, non-homeschooler would be the, the other term? I could really just speak to what our branches have a feel for. Sure. And they are noticing that our homeschool populations are, are using these kits. In fact, one of our branches even when it's hard to start offering a program called Homeschool Rocks, where they have science programming during the day for specifically homeschool groups because there was such an interest. Cool. Um, and the, the, the one other question that, that I came up with was um, the, uh, the, the child in the first slide who had taken the kit to the zoo um, made me wonder, do, have you officially partnered or approached anybody like the zoo or a local science museum or something to say, hey, we have these kits, can we make something work together, or is it pretty much this is the library's thing at the moment? Um, we haven't partnered with um, any organizations like the zoo or the science center. Most of our partnerships and our sponsorships for um, these kits are coming from actual science and uh, technology um, professions. Um, so, for instance, we are in an area that has a army base nearby, and so there are lots of um, engineers and scientists working in the area at places like SAIC um, and things like that. So those types of groups are more the partners and the sponsors that are, are working with us in these programs. Cool. Um, okay, at this point, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in from the audio. Oh, oh one more. Okay, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I always say that, and then one more comes in. Uh, Molly is asking, um, could you tell us more about getting the sponsors you have? Um, to which I'll, I'll maybe interpret, are you doing more than just having that page on the website? Are you actively trying to get sponsors? Um, at the start of this, um, at the start of this program, we did... Uh, seek out sponsors more actively, um, but our foundation handles that, and the foundation director um, seeks out those sponsorships, and so the uh, foundation will ask for sponsors through different interactions that they have with community members. Um, so a lot of times these uh, community members are seeing the kits within the branches and, and make that decision. Uh, they also will um, hold different fundraising events throughout the year, at which point people can specifically gear their donation towards the LEAP program. So all of that individual fundraising happens um, through their promotion of this, of this program and, and their sponsorship of it. Sure. Oh, and Chris is adding, uh, we have a similar program where most of our funding came from a grant. 
uh, which which makes me ask is like you've got this list here. Was it how many were from the original grant? How many are sponsored? Can you can you give us kind of a rough breakdown um, on that? Let me see if I have if I have that data in front of me. Let's see. Okay. You know, I actually don't know specifically which ones are funded through the grant and which ones are funded through sponsorship because okay. um, some um, some of the individual kits, while they have a theme, there are there may be ten of them out there, and part of that particular group would be sponsored by the original grant, and then uh, another section of those might be sponsored by a uh, a sponsorship. Oh, okay. So, so just even the topics listed here, you might have multiple copies of the same one too. Which... Yes, we we do have multiple copies Great. of the same one. Okay. Yeah, it's not just these that are out there. There are lots of each of these kits uh, throughout our branches. <laughs> okay, and uh, we got a couple uh, a comment and a question coming. Here. Oh, well, now they're coming in fast and furious here. So bear with me, folks. <laughs> Uh, first of all, okay. Lisa says, first of all, awesome. I'm from Cobb County Public Library System in Georgia. And we're so impressed with Hartford STEM kits that we have decided to create similar kits here. Uh, and she's spoken to a Shelly Dolan who has been super helpful yeah. in, in helping them get started. Yay, Shelly. Um, the next question from Molly is, are patrons able to put these on hold if they are checked out? Yes, the uh, LEAP kits are um, holdable from many, different, from many different reasons. One, if they're checked out. And I know I really want a certain topic, I can put it on hold so that when it comes back I can get it. Or if I am at a branch that doesn't have a dinosaur kit um, on the shelf right now, but it's on the shelf at a branch in the south end of the county, then I can um, go ahead and, and put that on hold and, and get it sent to my branch um, so that I have it. Mm -hmm. um, also, speaking to... Um, the librarian in Georgia that is recreating these. Yay, that's exciting. Shelly is amazing. She is our, our Leap Kit guru. She was the one that found the, the containers to, to circulate these in. And we do share all of these kits. Um, so if you are looking to recreate these, um, you can actually get the information on our website. And you know, we just, we just redesigned, so I want to make sure I'm telling you the right place to go. Um, you can actually get LEAP information right here. Um, if you go to For You and then Kids, it's at the top. You click on LEAP. Um, there is a list of LEAP Kit uh, Frequently Asked Questions. Uh, and through that, you can get Uh, lots of information on different suppliers that we use, and there is also a link to putting these kits together uh, yourself. So we do share that information with mm -hmm. anyone that's that's looking to recreate. And and I would think the homeschoolers might want to schedule to have a certain kit at a certain time to go with their curriculum and, and things like yeah, that. Yeah, and they're holdable for, for right. that, yeah. Uh, and Lisa says, uh, yes, she's found those, and uh, thank you so much for sharing the binders also. Yes, um, the binders are also available for, for people to recreate. We just ask that you give us a little nod. Yeah, that's that's always fair. Cite your sources. That's what we do. Um, okay, and Lisa from Church has one more question, and and uh, this is kind of a big one, so I'll let you answer it to, to how you want. I think at that point we'll, we'll let you move on to your next topic. Um, she says, she's curious about the kits that include the iPads. There's conflicting research opinions, uh, uh, or conflicting opinions and research regarding how much screen time that children under the age of five should have daily. I wonder if parents may actually appreciate the puzzles and activities over the iPads. She's also wondered if it's best to include them with the kits or offer them as an additional option. Okay, that question is actually... Um very relevant to my next two portions because the leap, the leap kits, as we are talking about them now, these particular kits um, that I've overviewed are intended for grades three to eight, and they do not have any iPads in them. 
Um, the iPad program is actually called uh, Little Leapers 3.5, and that's the third segment. So let's hold that question and talk about that um, then. All right. Sounds good. Okay, great. All right. So our next, uh, after the success of Leap, we made the decision to uh, expand the same idea of providing STEM kits to a younger audience. So we wanted to provide kits for uh, birth through five. So they are just like the Leap, the Little Leapers kits are just like the Leap kits in that they are box sets. They contain books that are science and math based, both fiction and nonfiction. They have toys, music CDs, science tools, different um, science experiments that they can engage in. They also come with binders that have um, three to five, sometimes even more, uh, activities that they can engage in with the materials that are in the kit. But they're also linked to the five early literacy practices from Every Child Ready to Read, Reading, Writing, Singing, Talking, and Playing. So they're, again, geared for that younger audience. And you can see the list of them here. Um, All About Me, <clears throat> Baby Animals, Colors, Shapes, and Numbers, and My Senses are all geared towards a younger audience. So they're geared towards your baby toddler audience because they're those very simple science topics that young children are learning and exploring at that time. So all of the items within those kits are um, safe to be chewed and gnawed and all of that kind of stuff. They have board books with them, within them instead of um, your typical, you know, paged books. So they're a little bit more durable and really all the toys are geared towards, towards that younger audience. Yeah, man, then I'm, I'm the rest of them, in, I'm an architect. Uh, yeah. We're still seeing your web browser, not your slide, so I don't know if you oh, want to just get back. That's all right. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. There we go. Better? Are you seeing the screen now? Hopefully, yes. Yes, you should be. Okay. So, um, so the rest of the list, I'm an architect through I'm a paleontologist, um, those are all geared towards preschoolers, so your um, three, four, and five-year-olds. So they have a little more intricate pieces, um, and they're intended to engage um, children and families together uh, seeking out these different, different careers. We also have recently added um, I'm a mechanical engineer, and we are working on a kit. Uh, I'm an ornithologist, um, the study of birds. So uh, currently growing uh, this collection as well. So again, it's the same concept as the regular Leap Sciences Fun kits, however, uh, just geared towards that younger audience. Again, I like to address the question, how much does this cost? Uh, these kits may range anywhere from two to three hundred dollars. Again, depending on the contents of each kit, uh, we were really fortunate to receive private funding to cover all the cost of uh, the materials as well as the plastic containers for this. And again, not something that our uh, foundation worked on. There is a list of vendors that we use for these because. These do incorporate some toys within them, um, but every vendor that supplies materials for these kits has to be able to give us a CISPIA um, regulation certificate that they're, they're compliant. So, and we keep that on file uh, here at our admin office. So in order to purchase from companies and in order to purchase specific things, they have to be um, able to provide us that. Uh, we do have some consumable items within the kits, um, and these are things that can be replaced very easily. If there are is any other wear and tear, they can come to the Leap Hospital and get and get fixed. If any books or materials need updated, um, the 
uh, materials management folks go ahead and take care of the ordering of that and technical services goes ahead and refreshes. Uh, we just finished calling back our little leapers kits, um, a subject at a time to be refreshed. So someone took a look at each of them to make sure that the contents were still uh, worth circulating and weren't damaged, um, and anything that needed replaced got replaced as a whole um, so that all of the uh, materials are fresh within the kits. Again, circulation questions. Um, how long do they circulate? They can also be checked out for a week. They have a renewal period for another week as long as there's no holds, uh, hold requests on any of them. They have the same um, $2 per day overdue fee um, that the week kits have. And same process, if something is missing, um, the circulation staff person that checks it in is going to you know, try to work with the borrower to find that missing item. But if they can't find it, then they're going uh, to be asked to pay for the replacement cost of the item. Again, with funding, um, all of our um, kit, all of the actual plastic kits were purchased by a private funder that, um, and the title sponsorship for these, um, this set of kits is Celebrity Learning Centers. Um, and then we had some additional funds come from SEIC, m and Bank, and Heart to Heart Transportation. Um, so the Library Foundation is the, um, again, the coordinator of all of these funds and reached out to these organizations um, for, for the funding of, of these particular kits. So different funding from the LEAP kits. Uh, we're growing this collection. This is a, um, a collection that we I said we were adding additional kits. We added, um, I'm a mechanical engineer, and we're adding, uh, I'm an ornithologist. And we have a team that develops additional kits, um, and they work to identify the materials that need to go in them and to write the, uh, the curriculum that goes along with it. Uh, we started out just having little leapers um, kits available at uh, certain branches, and they are being expanded to additional branches as well so that um, more branches actually have them on the shelves. Again, like the LEAP kits, no matter what branch you're at, you can place a hold to have your, your kit sent to that branch. And then finally, we noticed that while our LEAP kits focus on ages, uh, on grades um, uh, three and up, or four and up, well, three to four and up to eight, and our Little Leapers kits, focus on um, growth to kindergarten, that we were leaving out our first, second, and some of our third grade um, customers. So we are looking to expand the Little Leapers and the LEAP programs to cover those um, additional grades and to add some um, early reader materials and materials that fit for that age group specifically. So this program is um, is growing as well. Let's go back. And then um, I'll go ahead and switch you over to my other screen so that you can look at our web resources for this one. All right, so from our website, if you go to For You and Early Literacy, you can see that Little Leapers has a link there. And um, with a, a nod to our funders, you can also find um, some media coverage that we have had for these kits, um, as well as some pictures of kids engaged with the kits with one another. And then, just like the other ones, you can click on the kit, and you'll get um, the list of materials that are inside and the toys that are inside as well. Um, and then the actual binders with activities are located within the kits uh, for, for people to, to use as they 
go through. So that was I'm an architect, and you can see if you click on All About Me, you can see how the toys are uh, geared towards a lot younger learner. And we put the, the recommended ages on there. We have the nice little tip. A good scientist always leaves equipment and tools clean for the next person. Um, and we have, uh, that's, that specifically can apply to this one here, the I'm a marine biologist, um, because some of these items um, go very nicely into the bathtub, <laughs> like the swim goggles, um, and into the pool. And sometimes uh, this kit comes back a little drippy um, <laughs> and has to be dried off. Um, so we're actually looking at how we may not want to focus on water-based uh, science for many more of our kits just because it just doesn't go well with, um, with, <laughs> with the books and other materials. Uh, just like the leap kits, you can uh, create your own little leapers. Um, we just ask that you give us a nod. And there is a uh, frequently asked questions section as well as the activity binder and kit content for each um, each kit that's available. You can see that it goes through several different uh, observations and activities that these learners can engage in. Okay, so that is the Little Leapers kits. Uh, again, much like the Leap kits, just designed for a younger age group. Does anybody have any questions about Little Leapers? Uh, yeah, we got a couple of uh, questions and comments come in, and I, I, I've got a couple myself, if nobody else comes up with them. Um, we do have uh, Chris from Omaha Public here did share her link to their uh, science kits, and we'll put those in the show notes uh, after the fact. Uh, Molly is asking, when expanding, did you start by having all the kits at one library or distributing different, one, different kits to different branches? There we go. Uh, when we started the, the launch of each of these programs, they were, um, it was decided which branches would house them. Um, and a lot of those decisions were, were made with space in mind. Does the branch have shelving that can accommodate? Um, and like if, let's see, I'll go back to um, the presentation. If we go back, you can see that on a shelf, they can be you know, quite bulky. So um, each branch, you know, we made that decision independently, looked at what other special collections they might have, and um, and made the decisions that way. Um, so not every branch has these actually on their shelves in their branch. Um, but you again, you can request. And actually, for, for one of my questions, if you just stay right there on that picture, when I saw that picture, and earlier with the other kids, you had mentioned something about sealing them. Um, I, I saw that picture, and I thought, well, what happens if somebody just starts using it right then and there in the library and all the pieces and the parts? Are they able to do that? Is there some sort of controls? How, how does that work? We used to allow that, um, and, and the decision was made um, just recently in the last um, like four or five months that we are going to seal them. So. Uh, you can see where the handles um, come up over the, the lid of mm -hmm. the kit. Um, after all the items are accounted for by the circulation staff person, they zip tie them shut. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> so if someone, if someone is going to uh, bust these things open in the, in the branch, they're going to have to have a knife or, or scissors on them. Um, and, you know, we don't encourage that. We encourage that, you know, Little Leapers kits are used uh, at home. <laughs> and we do have we do have lots of other collections that can be used um, in the branches. Um, so we kind of direct people if you'd like to, to play with something. Um, like in this picture, actually, you can see at the very back of the picture, we have our learning and sharing collection in orange bags, which is a collection of puzzles, games, and toys, and puppets. Um, so we'll kind of direct people towards those if, if, that's, if they want to play with something in the branch. And then each branch also has learning activities with so that's kind of the, the line we walk on that. Sure. And the other question I had, and, and I have a feeling I, I know the answer, but I, I will ask the question anyways. 
how well do some of the different kits work with multiple kids versus an individual kid? I guess, you know, if, if you've got, you know, I guess homeschooler, you've got three kids all of, you know, the same relative age, um, how, how well do they work? And I guess, I'm, I'm thinking the answer is it depends on the kit, really. It does depend on the kit. Like, for instance, the All About Me, the My Senses, uh, Baby Animals, Color Shapes and Numbers, um, you're probably only going to have maybe one to two kids being engaged with that at, at one time. But if you look at, um, like if I pull up, let's do, I'm a botanist. Um, and you can see that there are, like in this first one, oh, I need to switch you over to mine. Yep, uh, I was just going to mention that. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Um, so we have, I'm a botanist, and that one of the activities is to explore the connection between seeds and food um, we eat by looking around the kitchen for edible seeds. So this is something that would be really fun with a lot of kids because they can kind of go on a scavenger hunt to, to investigate, you know, the different types of seeds that they might find. And then there's a great little conversation piece built in to talk about the seeds and how they're different and how they're alike. And then um, by, you know, exploring them even further. Um, so there are, you know, lots of ways that many children could engage with that very well. Sure. So it just kind of all depends on the activity and, and how you lead it. Great. Okay. Um, not seeing any other questions coming in from the audience on this one, so I think okay, uh, maybe we could take a look at the iPad. <laughs> okay. That's, that's the one that we'll get lots of questions on, I'm sure. Um, all right. So moving along, our third one is uh, Little Leapers 3.5, and um, 3.5 is, is a cute kind of way to put, put it because it nods to it being uh, digital, but also it describes the age ranges that we're focusing on, which is three to five-year-olds. Um, so this program, Little Leapers 3.5, um, engages children and parents together within the library um, on digital devices, iPad minis to be specific. And each of the iPad minis with, with it, oh, sorry about that. Um, so all of the iPad minis are loaded with apps that have been researched and selected by Harford County librarians. Uh, to not only uh, meet early literacy needs, but also to focus in on digital literacy skills, swipe technology, and dream topics. Um, so we're also looking for creativity and just that they're able to explore that tablet technology. Um, one of the main uh, focal points for this program is that digital technology, that digital awareness piece. Um, a lot of kids are in a digital divide when they start school where they are expected to be able to navigate a computer or a tablet and they don't have those resources at home so the, for, when they get to school they're having that hurdle to jump over. So we really wanted to uh, bridge that digital divide for those children and those families by providing the opportunity within the branches for families to explore together. Um, I'm going to play for you um, a video of the rollout of this. The local news station came out and, um, and covered the launch of this program. And it is a uh, a really good overview because you actually see the families engaging together. Um, and there's a few interviews with some parents and, and so on and so forth. The way that it's going to work within um, the webinar system is I have my volume up as loud as it can be um, and it's still a little um, muted for you. So if you could also turn your volume all the way up, then you should be able to hear just fine. I'm also going to keep it um, small because on the screen because uh, when I played it 
larger earlier, it didn't seem to come across as well. So, um, and then I also provided the link um, for you so that if you would like to um, watch it on your own later, you can do that. All right, so go ahead and turn up your volume. I will double check that my volume is up just the same. And we're ready to go. Okay, so that's just a little uh, overview from the from the news program. Um, along with this uh, initiative, um, we ha obviously have the minis within the branches and on our bookmobile. Um, we actually have them on both of our bookmobiles: um, our rolling reader, which is intended for children, and our silver reader, which is intended for seniors. Um, in hopes that possibly the um, little Leapers 3.5 minis can um, help um, older uh, customers and seniors to familiarize themselves with um, the, the digital technology but, and be able to engage with their possibly grandchildren um, with the devices and, and the apps. Uh, the implementation of actual minis within the branches uh, took a lot of coordination um, from selecting the apps to loading the apps to uh, determining how they would be tethered um, to looking at cases that would hold the minis, uh, locations for them, furniture, seating, all of that was taken into consideration as this program was launched. Uh, also, as you saw within the news video, there is programming that is happening where librarians are using uh, the minis within programs, within story times to promote digital literacy to families. We also provide an app list uh, for families, and that app list is located on our website switch over to my website monitor again. And it looks like this. And so it has the uh, title of the app as well as the creator and the cost. You can see that we really tried to keep most all of the apps either free or very low cost. A couple of them do hit the $4.99, $3.99 range. 
but we tried to keep them um, affordable for families that if they have phones or tablets at home, they're able to also get the apps without, so they don't just use them at the branch. This is the first app list that was created. This app list is the one that is currently in use in all of the branches, and we are currently developing um, a second list of recommendations because as uh, this technology grows and as new apps are being developed, we want to stay current just as we would with our collections. Uh, there are also staff members that check these apps for updates because sometimes an app can drastically change with a new update. Uh, so we want to take a look at that and we want to make sure that they are still achieving the goal of, of the program. So um, again, this list is available as well as a new list that is, that is soon to be coming. We also have an app of the month um, feature with Little Leapers 3.5 where we recommend a different app each month for um, children. And again, these are librarian tested. They have a, um, a range of uh, steps and checks that they go through when, when looking at an app to verify that it is something that, yes, we do want to endorse um, for our customers. We also promote these each app, the app each month on um, our Facebook pages as well. So let's move back. Uh, this is a big question I always get is how did you fund this? Um, this project is funded um, actually by one um, sponsored donor um, as well as um, funding additional funding from our library foundation and the actual public library itself. Um, so the purchase of um, the iPad minis, uh, the apps, and the tables and chairs um, that went along with this was um, all sponsored by a group called uh, Morrissey Mechanic Foundation and um, the upkeep of of the, the project and, and the additional um, costs that, that are accrued and, and the rest of the project was funded through, through the library um, and through the foundation. So um, along with this, something to think about within funding is as we are adding new apps, there is additional funding required. So branches are getting app budgets um, because not only do they need to purchase uh, the apps to go on the minis, but they need to purchase um, apps that, that might not end up on the minis that we may try out and might not be um, something that, that we want to move forward with. So something to think about uh, when moving forward with a project like this. Um, before I go to that, let's see if there's anything else that I I did not share. Oh, we are expanding this project. Um, we started out with our minis only at a few branches. Um, the, they were at the Aberdeen, Abington, Edgewood branches and then um, our two bookmobiles. And we have since expanded that to adding um, four more branches. Uh, this year. Uh, all 10 um, iPad minis that were mentioned in the news report are n were not uh, being used on the floor, like being tethered uh, and out at all times. And we were finding the ones that we were allowing for checkout weren't being checked out. So we have been able to expand the original purchase of the minis to additional branches. So there wasn't any additional funding. We're just reallocating some of the minis so that they can be in different branches within the system. So that expansion is happening. Um, there is also additional um, uh, expansion for this program 
uh, to add a lot more education to this. And this kind of feeds into the question that I got um, earlier that, um, you know, what are we doing with, you know, there's a lot of conflicting research out there about how technology should be used with this age group and um, is screen time appropriate and how much is and stuff like that. And there's been so much research that has gone back and forth with uh, and so many statements by different organizations that the library is taking the position that we are going to try to help our community clear the air somewhat um, with that and, and understand uh, what is current. So we are actually bringing in um, two speakers in April uh, to celebrate the month of the young child. Um, we're bringing in Tanya Smith from the Fred Rogers Institute as well as Claudia Haynes from um, Little Elit to have a digital literacy symposium and um, we're calling it Welcome to the Digital Neighborhood. And it's going to be a really neat um, symposium in that parents and children are going to be welcome and they will um, We'll have the librarians pull the children out for a digital story time while the parents and families can be um, tuned in to our speakers. The speakers are not just going to present research, but also um, fun and in, and in meaningful ways to engage in this technology with uh, young children. And then the kids will be brought back in so that um, the families can interact together with the experts on hand. We're also going to be launching at that same time uh, Little Leaper's 3.5 Digital Camp. And this has um, six classes as a part of it, three that are PC specific and three that are tablet specific. Um, and you can see the, the class offerings there. Um, so we're hoping to, again, uh, be the leaders and, and being good advocates for excellent use of digital media um, and digital technology with this age group. And I think, did I skip one? Oh, and we've been fairly successful. And when I say fairly successful, we've been recognized um, here in Hartford County for two years in a row as Innovator of the Year. Uh, in 2013, the Little Leapers kits won the Innovator of the Year Award. And in uh, just this year, in 2014, Little Leapers 3.5 also won the Innovator of the Year Award. This is a really exciting award for us to win because other organizations that are recognized by this award are those that are in the medical profession and scientific fields where um, you know, people's lives are being saved by some of the inventions that are recognized by Innovator of the Year. And we think it's really great that they would choose to recognize the library for their efforts within um, STEM and literacy. So we're very excited about that. So at this point, um, I'll take what is probably a bunch of questions. I know I'm coming right up on my time. We started 10 minutes late, and I think it is currently, uh, yeah, exactly 12.10. So I don't know how you want to work that. I'll let you make that decision. Um, sure. I can take questions now. I'm fine with that. Or um, you know, people can feel free to get in touch with me if they have further questions, Whatever, however you want to work it. No, uh, we're good. We do not get cut off at the hour, so we will, as, as long as people are, uh, have questions, we, we'll, we'll keep going as long as you are willing to. Um, so I've got a couple short questions that I came up with. We've got at least one question from the audience coming in. Anybody else have questions, go ahead and type them in. Also, if you have a microphone, we'll turn it on for you. Um, uh, my first question, short one, and if I miss this, I apologize at the beginning. I know what STEM is. I know what STEAM is. STREAM is new to me. What's the R stand for? <laughs> Stream. Let's see. I have to go through it. <laughs> Technology. Reading. Reading. Okay. Uh, engineering, engineering. Arts. Art. And mathematics. <laughs> okay. All right. I, I, yeah, I'm, I don't do the kid stuff all that often, so I, 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 stream was a new one to me. Um, they just keep adding letters to it. Oh, I know. Yeah. It, there'll probably be another S on the end next or something. And, you know, yeah. Stream, and, hey, we should create that. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Um, a comment, and, and I'm, I'm going to completely come out of left field for this because I'm, I'm, I'm a big person about sharing, and I don't know 
what permissions and, and, and what equipment you have, but is there any chance you're going to record any part of that symposium uh, for other people to watch afterwards? And if not, maybe if I could just encourage you to, to you invest know, in I hadn't, that. I hadn't considered that. That's something that's still you know, in development. And um, I'm sure I know that uh, both Tanya and the folks at, at um, Little Elit are all about sharing. So next time we have a meeting, um, I'll, I'll bring that up. And, and yeah, at least like the presentations and the Q&A, obviously once you get to the hands-on and the individuals, that would be a lot more difficult. But I think a lot of our audience uh, uh, would, would be very interested in, in participating, and they're not going to be there. So uh, just a thought yeah, there. I can, I can definitely bring that up. We're also doing a training the day before that. Um, with those same speakers for um, our staff. Ah, which leads us to the one question I have from the audience sitting there. That was perfect. Thank you. Molly is asking, can you tell us more about the training for your staff um, with either specifically the iPad Mini, she's asking, but uh, with any of this? Okay. With, um, with the iPad Minis, we do have, like I said, a set of selection criteria for... Um, for apps and um, have you know educated the staff that are involved in selecting apps but a lot of the other education pieces have come from staff interest and staff attending um, conference sessions webinars and just kind of finding what's out there and and getting engaged and so those staff members are the ones that are really leading the charge with this right now um, and then additionally uh, you know, now we're bringing in, um, you know, uh, the speakers from uh, Fred Rogers and Digital Elit to um, really round out that training for all staff. So everyone that is involved within children's programming uh, within our system will actually attend uh, that training in April. Great. Um, Lisa is asking, just to clarify, because I, I, I think this is what you said, but I understand why she's asking. When you offered iPads for circulation, did you say that they were not checked out very often? We didn't offer them for circulation out of the building. Ah. So the idea was that every location, uh, the three locations that have the minis, would have um, half of them tethered someplace out on the floor, um, so to to furniture and have seating with it. And then the other half of the minis that was allocated to that branch would be located at the desk for checkout for use within the branch. So they could just go up to the information desk and say, can I get a mini? Um, and then it would be checked out on their card. They can use it for a period of time, kind of like your computer use within, within your branch. And then they return it before they left. It wouldn't leave our building. Um, and we found that having them behind the desk and having it so someone had to ask for it was a big barrier in people using them. So instead of having them all out, depending on the size of the branch, um, like for instance, Abington is a very large branch, so they made the decision, let's just go ahead and put the rest of our minis out on the floor. So all of their minis are available out on the floor and are tethered. Then the other two branches, they're the branches that we decided to reallocate um, some of the ones that were behind the desk um, at their branches so that other branches can be expanded to the service. Okay. But yes, when someone had to actually ask for it to, to come up and get it and use it, we found that it was not, um, not a, a checkout that was happening very often. Okay, all right. Um, so, uh, um, and fo uh, other audience questions, I've got a couple more, so you've still got time if you've got questions to, to type those in. Um, so I'm assuming the choice of uh, iPads as a platform, uh, whoops, that's, I'm being reminded of something now. Um, we had to do, you're using the Apple, the, the iPad management software, and you're locking things down, and you're only installing certain apps, and they all match? Yes, uh, within the... Um because you can link um, devices together within the Apple management, um, you are, we are able to you know, purchase an app once and have it go to 10 separate devices. Right. So that's helpful. Um, we also have uh, Meraki on all of the 
uh, devices, which helps us to maintain them and push updates and, and so on and so forth. Um, a few hiccups with using Apple uh, devices is that they're not intended for this purpose. They're intended to be someone's individual device. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of features that don't necessarily, that you can't necessarily turn off. And um, one of them is um, when the, the mini times out, um, it will do so after four hours. Um, and it will require a, um, a password to log back in because we have turned off certain features that require a password. So, oh. so what would happen is um, parents, and I think children as well, were just kind of guessing at the password. <laughs> um, <laughs> Is and just kind of putting in, and just kind of putting in whatever, and you can do that on an Apple device ten times before it completely uh, shuts itself off, and uh -huh. a very lovely paperweight at that point. So uh, what was happening is after that tenth time, and it's not ten consecutive; it's like just ten times. Ten bad choice. Oh wow! So after the after the tenth time, then that would become. Uh, an unusable device. So it would have to come back to our computer services department and they would have to recover the device which has many steps to go through because you have to recover the actual device, you have to recover the iCloud, um, which is you know recovering all your apps and um, would take a bit of time. So a very very easy fix for that, um, quite simple in fact, is that we just put some signage up. <laughs> that says, right. Um, that said, if if prompted for a password, find a library staff person. And then we also have at the branches that have the minis, someone allocated um, every four hours, which is only twice a day, uh, to go over and ensure that the password has been entered and the device is functional. Sure. And okay. since doing that, um, we haven't really seen uh, dead ones come back to us. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so I just I just have to um, uh, you know stick my hand up for the other platform, and I will just ask one question regarding that. On on your list of apps, are you paying any attention to whether those apps are also available on Android for people who might want to use those apps at home but don't have iP iPod iPads Apple devices? This is something that our our team is um, currently exploring. Um, the situation with, and I get this question a lot about Apple versus uh, Android, and really it comes down to the approval process for an app. Um, Apple has a strict approval process, and they will go to an app developer and ask for revisions to be made to their apps until they meet Apple standards. And it, there's a, a long approval process. However, to create an Android app, anybody can do it. I can create one and get it up in the same uh -huh. way that I've created it and nobody is providing any checks and balances for me. So because of that you find that there are many more really great Apple apps than there are Android apps. However, some apps do, some app developers do create both. So in our next list of apps if there is a Android equivalent, um, like if it has been published in, in both um, stores, then there will be a notation of that. Yeah, that, that's kind of what I was looking for. I, I mean, it, you know, as much as I have my own personal opinions on the platforms, I totally understand why you would go with Apple. But just kind of that also available on Android, I think, might be of use to, to some people. Yeah, the next list will have that cool. um, kind of little symbol or like, you know, maybe we'll put Android or something to, to allow people to know that, hey, you can find this for other devices right. as well. Right. Okay. Um, and it looks like we have one last question from our audience from Lisa, uh, uh, just looking for a clarification. When you say tethered, do you use cases to keep them locked down? So I guess what, what technology are you using for the physical tethering? I don't know the actual technical names of them, um, but we started with um, like these arms that like held the device and it was like this very um, rigid material and it like actually held the device up and they started 
as the kids were moving the arm and the device, little metal shavings were coming out all over the place. Ooh, not good. <laughs> yeah, so we abandoned those, and now the tether is more um, just like a, almost like you see in uh, like Best Buy um, at their uh, like phone bars and, and uh, stuff like that where it's just the cable that's attached to to the device mm -hmm. um, and the device actually sits on a table and is uh, has one part of the tether on the back of it and the other part of the tether on the, on the table and it's like a, a, a certain length cable. Sure. Um, if yeah, because because somebody's asking, uh, I'll, I'll I'll kind of say this to the audience and to you. Uh, we usually get the the slides and things uh, from our presenters for show notes um, and any links that they mentioned. We'll put in the show notes. Um, maybe if you could find uh, what that is uh, and like a link to a, a, a wherever you buy them from. If, yeah, I'll ask. If, if you can find that, computer services. yeah, we'll go ahead and put that in the show notes. Uh, as we can, and that way people can come back and, and look later. Um, well, I am not seeing any other questions having come in, and because we have kind of gone we, uh, a little long, we, we, we've, lo we've lost a couple of attendees. People usually you know, schedule out their time. Um, but um, I think at, at this point, is, is there anything else you would like to mention that you haven't at this point before we wrap up? No, just like I said before, if you have any questions, you can feel free to, to shoot me an email. Um, I've said several times during the um, webinar that we are more than willing to, to share anything that we're doing, um, and you can just shoot me an email, and I'll be, I'll be happy to answer. Yeah, well, I, I, first of all, I just want to say thank you. It sounds like this program is, is going absolutely gangbusters, and uh, when, when I got the text message this morning saying, will you run the show, I was kind of like, oh, what's the topic? And I was like, oh, kid stuff. And, but I, I mean, this was really interesting. I gotta say, not not my general area, um, but uh, man, some of those kids sound like I, you know, I'd like to play with them. Maybe. <laughs> Good, I'm um, glad. Even without the technology, just uh, some of the that I always I had that invisible person model when I was a little kid that you would piece together and whatever. So, um, yeah, and and we have a comment here. Thank you so much for sharing your ingenuity. Way to go, Harford. So. Thank you. Um, yes. So um, with that, I'm going to uh, take back control here for just a couple of minutes and uh, wrap up our show for the day. So give me just a moment here to do that. Uh, I would like to thank everyone for attending and uh, our, our session here today. I'm going to back up a screen in my browser here. We have some uh, upcoming shows, uh, cool tools for you and your library next week. That is uh, Chris Burns, our, our usual host, uh, doing that. This is a session that she does at uh, our state uh, conference and just did it a couple of weeks ago when there was a standing room in the hallway only. So if you didn't see that and you're in Nebraska, uh, now's your chance. And if you're not in Nebraska, hey, you know, come uh, uh, watch the show. Uh, the week after that, Books and Water Don't Mix or How We Survive the Water Disaster. That sounds like it could be fun. Uh, and then at the end of the month, I will be back with my tech talk with a, a gentleman talking about the Arduino platform. So if you're kind of a hardware geek or looking for uh, things to build with computers, you can do that. And like all of our episodes, you're free to register for those. And we also like to mention that uh, Encompass Live is also on Facebook. You are welcome to follow us there if you are one of those Facebook types, uh, and where we post information about uh, upcoming shows, when the shows are going live, and um, when recordings are available. So with that, I would like to thank uh, Amanda one more time, and thank you all for attending this week's episode of Encompass Live, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.